me, is this seat taken? Good dog hair on the lens. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a lighter that uh, doesn't want to cooperate. It's, it's the original one, as you can tell. That's the one that the car came with when it was new. Um, it's really sticky. I don't know why. But uh, I think what we're going to have to do is just remove it and then rebuild it. And figure out why it's being so stubborn. So uh, we'll carefully try to get this out. Sometimes you just gotta gently go at it a few times and then, and then it should pull out if we're lucky. Now these are these can be a real challenge to uh, to get out, especially when you can't get the actual lighter part out. This is an unusual problem on this one. You usually can get the lighter part out of it quite easily. plug your phone in to charge your phone and the thing won't come apart and you've got a couple of options you can either fight with it and fix it which is what we're gonna do uh, or if this doesn't work out we can actually hook up an aftermarket uh, piece that would actually give us the opportunity to plug more than one device in at the same time so uh, let's see how we do on this and uh, we may require tools but we'll, uh, we're gonna have a go I'm gonna get my little micro screwdriver out and I'm going to poke around in there and see if we can get this thing, the whole thing to release. Then we can have a good shot at it without breaking anything. Yep. Okay, so we're back. Got our little screwdriver. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these little tabs here. Because the little tabs, I think, is what's causing the problem. Now, one, th one cautionary note that I want to say before we go any further with this is um, if this still has power connected to it, you're going to want to find the fuse under the dash for the lighter and take it out because you don't want to get a shock. Uh, chances are you're going to blow the fuse before you do, but uh, just a word to the wise, uh, definitely pull the fuse on that or disconnect the battery if you can't figure out which fuse it is. We've, uh, we've stuck our head under the dash and we've determined that uh, this, this is actually what the plug looks like that goes to the back of the lighter. So we know that there's no power to this right now, so we're safe to, uh, to go after it. So we're going to take some more of this uh, Clean Flow Honey Goo Penetrating Oil and Lubricant and we're just going to put a little bit on there and uh, we're going to see what it does. We're going to try to work it in a little bit. That's going to hopefully give us the ability to get this thing loose. We're almost there with it. This is how well this, this honey goo works. It's amazing. So just a little tiny spray like that. It bubbles and it gets right into where it's supposed to be. And then we can just pull and push until we get this thing out. So I think we're very close. There we go. That's all it took. As you can tell, that honey goo just helped to break up all of the, uh, all the rust and all the stuff that's on this lighter assembly that's been on there for all these years. So uh, you can tell it, you know, if you can see in there or not, but you can see all the stuff that's built up on the coil, on the actual lighter itself. And uh, so I don't know what our chances are of actually getting it out, but uh, yeah, we may, uh, we may have to put that on the bench to get it out because I think it's actually rusted in, but 
But what we can also do, we can take some, some more of this, because it's not budging otherwise. We can actually spray that now that we've got it off. We'll put a little bit in there. A little bit on the other side. Yeah, we'll just let that soak in for a few seconds. Just rest it there. You can see it goes on like honey as well. It's a honey of a product. So now that we've got that, we can just manipulate these two little clips on the side. Take any pressure off that might be holding it back there. And we might be able to uh, pry it a little bit through the sides here. Just to help to break that bond that's formed in there. And we may need to put this on the bench too, to get enough leverage on it to, uh, to actually get that out. So what we'll do is we'll spray a little more of the honeydew in there and then we'll take it in the shop and then we'll actually uh, remove this from the, uh, the actual electrical part of it here. We'll evaluate this to make sure that it's serviceable and that it's going to work and if not then we'll replace it with something that will. Was there wires that were attached to that back of that? Because when it came out, I didn't see any wires come loose. Um, the wires were already disconnected. That was the plug that we showed you oh, gotcha. at the beginning to make sure, because we wanted to know that there was no power going to this while we did what we did to it. Yeah, so uh, we were able to determine that this had already been unplugged. That's the, uh, the offset prongs there. Plug in just like that. So when I saw this plug under there, I knew exactly what it was for. Okay, so we've, we've sprayed some penetrating oil on there, and we're actually getting some, uh, you can see all the rust that's starting to come out. So we're actually getting somewhere. It's starting to take effect. So we're not far off of actually uh, having this thing ready to, ready to come out. So what we'll do is we'll pull that out as much as we can. We'll clean some of that stuff out of there. And then hopefully we can get the other part to release. Oh, we're getting super close now. Yeah, the part that needs to come out is actually this little piece here. That's, um, yeah, it's half out already. We just need it to come the rest of the way. So this part's moving great. This part needs to come away from that part. So that's what we're going to work on the next couple of minutes. We'll soak it down again with some penetrating oil, and then we'll go after it again. What we need to do now is we need to put a little bit of pressure on this so that we can hopefully... I think the only way we're going to break that bond is to actually turn this. So we want to carefully do it. We've got a couple of robo grip type pliers here. So we want to try to grab it and turn it if we can without crunching the entire thing. So it's so flimsy. I think this one's had the biscuit. I think it's done. But we're going to see if we can. Oh, we got it turning. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's welded, it's welded itself shut. If we take it outside, you'll be able to see we've kind of broken that bond now, but it's very, very tight. So that's about the only way this thing's coming apart is by twisting it. Now we've, now we've managed to break that weld that it's created for itself. You can see how degraded that is. It's amazing. But there's your problem right there. <laughs> so now we have a lighter that will come apart, um, but we are going to have to go looking for a new one of those because the contacts in there are just destroyed. So in order to have a, a working cigarette lighter for, not for cigarettes, but for uh, iPhone or whatever else he's going to be plugging in there, uh, we're going to want to find a new socket. So uh, we'll work on finding one of those real quick and then show you how to reinstall. So we've managed to find ourselves a 
rather clean used replacement lighter socket for this 91 Mazda Miata. Uh, as you can tell on the inside it looks a thousand percent better than the other one did. The outside's good. Uh, all the electrical stuff here looks quite nice as well. Uh, what I do uh, want to do with it though is I want to put a little tiny film of this stuff in there. This is the dielectric tune-up grease. Uh, helps conductivity. Also helps to you know, help things to slide in and out as well because things, you know, if you've ever plugged your iPhone charger or your phone charger or anything or your GPS into your lighter, uh, quite often they fit so tightly they actually pull the thing out of the socket, you know, when you remove the, uh, the charger. So if you have a little bit of dielectric grease in there, it helps to, uh, helps it to come out without actually pulling the, the socket out of the car. Uh, we'll also put a little bit on the electrical connections here. Just, just a thin film's all you need. Here we go. Put a little bit more on the inside of this one. So now what we want to do um, is we want to take our power cord here, and we need to fish it up into that hole that the lighter's going to go into. But it'll be a lot easier to connect it before we push it back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Phillips number two. And I'm going to remove both of these screws for this uh, this cover plate here, and I'll be right back. I was going to ask you, what if you got a coat hanger and stuck it through there and taped it to the end and pulled it through? Uh, that's one way to do it, but this is the easy way. Gotcha. So, yeah, once you have this panel off, it comes off very easily. There's two screws. That's a Phillips number two. just like that. And you gently pull that off. It clips on here and here. It, it kind of hooks in and then the clips, it has clips in here. So, you'll notice on this, this particular car, this is a Canadian model, it's a 91, this is plastic. Um, the reason this is plastic on this particular car, and it may be metal on yours, pretty, pretty heavy gauge stuff, um, is this car does not have airbag. Canadian cars didn't have airbag until 93. So what you're going to notice is anything that has the airbag has a very heavy duty metal cover plate that goes underneath the steering wheel. Uh, the non-airbag cars, uh, 90, 91, 92 in Canada, um, had these plastic ones. In the US, I think they had airbags from 90 all the way up. So this was made of metal. Just a side note for you. So now that we've got that off, we can very easily reach in behind here and feed the plug through like so. Having a look at the wires, everything looks factory original, hasn't been doctored or cut up or anything like that. So now that we've done that, I'll plug this guy in like so. And now this, you'll notice on this little part here, on this green part, there's a little notch here. It's hard to see, it's easy, very easy to miss. There's, there's just a little notch there. You'll notice on this, there's a corresponding notch right there. And what you wanna do is line that up. If you can line that up, then this is gonna slide in a lot easier, like that. And there we are. So you now have a working lighter and uh, problem solved. So we'll reattach this plate. So we'll feed the top part in first, we'll center it, we'll, we'll hold it like this first, we'll find, make sure the screws go into the little metal clips in behind, tighten them up one at a time. Okay, all back together. And that gap is how it is? Big pardon? This gap? That gap's meant to be there, yeah. Yeah, as long as you don't have a gap here or here, then you're all set.